What's going on everybody? Jeff Holiday here and today we have a really interesting topic. We've got a strange network of biomedical companies that have all been like kind of assorted together in various different efforts but culminated recently in a sketchy lab in Mexico where they claim that they can cure any cancer no matter what and in fact have already been engaging in human trials for sketchy, weird, unproven treatments, sort of, uh, for, for a bit now. <laughs> and because these people uh, are actually people who work in biomedical industry fields, um, they, they have a tendency to talk very big, talk a very big scientific mumbo-jumbo lingo. Well, thankfully, I do understand that kind of thing enough that I can then go and further educate myself and pick out exactly what the problems of these arguments are. So I had to kind of like put on my smart guy glasses for this one. And so take a trip with me as we examine what this argument is that they're trying to make, what the problems are, and then examine why this is so sketchy and really, really fucking weird. Let's go. This is the website for Humility Life Extension Program. Or is it Humanity Life Extension? Because it is HumanityLifeExtension.com, yet it says it says Humility right up there. Not really quite sure. I don't think they've really quite settled into their branding. But their claim is that they can, in just a few hours, eradicate any cancer inside your body using a very specific three-step methodology. But before we get specifically into the humility slash humanity life extension program, I, I really want to point out a couple of things. Now, the CEO of this company is a man by the name of Patrick Spearman. He's the founder, but he also ran or currently runs rather a company called Lexion Medical. Lexion Medical is a legit company that sells biomedical technology to doctors, hospitals, etc., etc. But he also runs a company called Coag Medical. And Coag Medical, not that long ago, got awarded like the FDA approval and everything on an emergency coagulant product. Now, I mention this because I want you to understand that these are people who do have reputable businesses out there. For instance, if we look at Humanity Life Extension LLC, their address is 545 Atwater Circle in St. Paul, Minnesota. Well, over here at Lexion Medical, they are at 545 Atwater Circle, St. Paul, Minnesota. Okay? And also, over here, in Humanity Life Extension, you have Patrick R. Spearman, the CEO, and a Shelly Aman, who is the president. Well, over here, we have on PRS, PRN, PRNewsWire.com, uh, Coag Medical and Lou Ferrigno announced Stops Bleeding product launch. Uh, in this, they're talking quite specifically about a Dr. Amir Ahmed. We'll learn about him in a minute. Uh, but also, Coag Medical CEO Patrick Spearman is quoted as saying, Walmart buyers are talented, great listeners, and power to make major decisions on the spot. Shelly Aman, Vice President. So these are people involved in at least three different businesses three different bio biomedical companies keep that in mind and it may seem kind of a strange thing that I'm, I'm pushing this as hard as I am but there's a very specific reason why I am because of what these people who otherwise should have known better are currently doing now is a bit troubling so going back to humanitylifeextension.com over here in their uh, photos section uh, Patrick Spearman and Shelly Amon, CEO and President, respectively. Down here, we've got Dr. Amir Ahmed and Dr. Angel Gamboa. Again, these are people who are involved in Humanity Life Extension. Dr. Amir Ahmed uh, has worked at major and prestigious hospitals. He is a legit medical doctor. Why he's involved with this, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, just as an, as an aside, though, they, they do have these two aides here. Um, their names are... Alexander Aristotle and Maximilian Adonis? That's not your names. What? 
And as you can see here from the footage released on humility cancer treatment, that why is your phone out? You're in a, you're in a procedure room and you're messing around with your phone. What is wrong with you, Maximilian Adonis, anyway? So uh, this is the basic room in which they're supposed to do this treatment that eradicates any and all cancers in the body. Um, it, it is a bit strange uh, that he's in here filming and everybody seems to be looking at him like, why are you here? What are you doing? Will you please get out? But I digress. To get a broader understanding of what exactly this treatment is supposed to be, um, before I press play on this, so just uh, brace yourselves. Hello, my name is Patrick Spearman. I am with Humanity Life Extinction, and we were created in the year 2013 because we believed we had a cure for cancer. We believe we've developed that cure for cancer. Now, that's a very strong word. We believe our treatment will cure many cancers, and the ones that it may not cure 100%, but maybe 98 or 99%, we believe we have a platform for this cancer that will allow us to destroy the rest of that cancer. Look, I don't know whose idea it was to shoot this video, like set the, the green screen up in, in, in the morgue of the hospital that you're working at. It's a bad choice. I mean, I'm already very distracted by this man's enormous mouth surrounded by very strange, strange facial hair. Uh, but it, it doesn't help that he's lit up like a, like a goddamn corpse. I'm just, I, I don't know. I don't know. Who do we talk to? Who do we complain about this? This is really bad. I'm going to give you an example of it here, and that is, if you were to bring a patient to us at any stage, let's say they're stage four, and they have triple negative breast cancer, or they have pancreatic cancer, and they've been sent home by a prestigious institution with one or two months left, we can take that patient, we can put them on our procedure, and the procedure will last about four hours. And then there's some time after that that it takes to remove some toxins from the body. We'll describe that in a moment. And we can remove all of the cancer from their body so that it is no longer visible in a PET scan, a CT scan, or an MRI scan. Remember, this is a stage four patient with just a couple months remaining of their life who's been sent home and said, prepare for the end. I think by now, Unless you're new to the channel, which in which case, hello, hi, I hope you subscribe. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to learn how to be a real YouTuber by saying things like, hey, you should subscribe and check out all of my social media links. Uh, I don't, I don't. Uh, by now, if you've been watching me for a while, you know that anytime somebody's like, hey, if you're sick and you're dying, ha ha ha, we can save you. It's a big fuck off red flag. Big nasty red flag. Um... <clears throat> And it gets it gets worse, like when you when you understand like what they're what they're actually trying to convince people to sign up for. And we're here today telling you we are going to remove all their cancer to the point that an MRI, a CT scan, or a PET scan it will not show up there, and it will be gone. We've done fifteen human trials to date. Fourteen of them were on U.S. citizens. Mm -hmm. So fifteen human trials to date, fourteen of which were American citizens. It's a bit troubling. It's a bit troubling because when you start to look into this, it, it, it becomes very apparent that there's a real big problem. For instance, if we come over here on their website, Clinical Locations was approved for trial in several countries, including India, Hong Kong, and Mexico. The facilities in Mexico were chosen for this procedure based upon technical resources, doctor, surgeons, hospital staff, and its close proximity to the United States, whereby patients from the United States could choose to have the procedure. And if we go up to the top of every single one of these pages, not FDA approved, not available for use in the United States. Well, they have to say that, because otherwise they could get in very serious trouble. But I actually think they could probably get in serious trouble anyway. Well, we'll talk about that at the end of the video, but I digress. One more thing before we get into the gritty of the actual science of this, I, I wanted to bring this up too, just just so we have this in mind when we're like watching this video of this guy talk. Uh, it's from Glassdoor. One review from working at Coag Medical. If you remember, uh, Mr. Patrick Spearman was the CEO over there. <clears throat> I worked at Coag Medical full-time more than 10 years. I gained a lot of experience and had the opportunity to work with different engineers. Cons. 
Poor management, poor decision making, didn't follow regulations, CEO was super disrespectful, always chaotic, and just a mess. I did everything there from shipping and blah, 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 blah. Advice and management, follow FDA, FDA and OSHA regulations. Uh-oh. Have better management or at least someone better that knows how to run a company. Oh, snap. <laughs> and now not to be too sassy, but as I'll show you later, um, you know, Patrick here can be pretty sassy himself. So before you cast any shade on me, just keep that in mind. No, the reason we believe this will be a wonderful way to cure cancer is that we have a platform for curing cancer and here's the platform that we utilize there are three different parts to our procedure number one is heat everyone knows that cancer dies at 107.6 degrees fahrenheit or 42 degrees celsius no not everybody not everybody knows that uh no not everybody knows that but you know what you 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 go right ahead Good cells do not die until 44 degrees Celsius or 111 degrees Fahrenheit. So we have come up with a method to raise the body temperature of a human being to 108 degrees and keep every cell in their body within one tenth of one degree Celsius. If we can hold a person there safely, and we can, very safely, all their cancer will die. So once you have the person here to this temperature, the second part of our procedure You cook people. You cook them. You have cooked 15 human beings. You cooked them. So this is where things are gonna get a little bit complicated. I'm gonna have to try and talk in a way that's gonna be very easy to understand. What he's referring to is a method called hyperthermia. Not hypothermia, but hyperthermia, above in thermal. Um, and this idea is actually something that is utilized in cancer treatment. Usually not the whole body. Usually not. If you have, say, breast cancer and your tumor is there, they might have some sort of directed heat towards that tumor. The only time that it is ever appropriate to try and heat up the entire human body in such a way for cancer is if it's such masticized, tendrilized cancer all throughout their body. And in which case, I mean, good luck with, with it. Good luck with anything at this point. But, but... Doesn't say that there's no validity to it. There is some validity to it. However, in biomedical science, in the actual legit medical field, this type of thing is used in conjunction with chemotherapy, with radiation, with other traditional conventional cancer treatments. It's supposed to assist with. It is not the main function. It is a secondary treatment on top of what otherwise you're doing. Because if you can do directed heat at something, and it might help, why not? But the whole problem with this is that their paradigm that they start with, their very basis for their treatment, is that heat kills cancer. And the problem with this is, too, is if, like, doing this can be incredibly dangerous. Incredibly dangerous. Even in, like, the best of care, in the finest hospital, heating the entire human body up in that manner is very dangerous. If your fever gets too hot, you can get brain damage. And this idea that the human body and all of your cells only start to get damaged at a certain threshold, that's not even true. That's not even true, you fucking idiot. The different tissues inside of our body react to heat in different ways. They have different thresholds. There are some of your organs that will last way beyond otherwise the heat that would cause your skin to start to blister. There are other things that are way more sensitive than that. The, the, the idea that, like, it's because it's cancer. It's cancer, which makes it, like, less than just healthy cells all have this, like, they all know that if they're healthy, they can resist the heat to the, to what? No! How does that, I don't even know how anybody, I don't even know how anybody comes to this idea. It's hilariously wrong, and I don't know why this guy's talking about it in such a manner. He's, he's clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. Anyway, let's get to number two. There is chemistry. In order to make the cancer die faster, we put in a catalyst. One of the catalysts we utilize is iron. Iron bonds to electrons. It's called reactive oxygen species. And it's taking a heavy metal and it is stealing electrons from atoms that make up the molecule of the cancer cell. 
hang on. I'm, I imagine anybody out there who who was a chemistry major, uh, their your, their brains just exploded. But let, let's 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 break this down. So we're gonna have to get into some chemistry real fast. See if we can try and brush through this in a way that's really easy and simple to understand. Reactive oxygen species, or we'll just call them ROS, okay? Or ROS. We'll call them ROS, okay? ROS is a type of molecule. It's always an oxygen molecule that is highly reactant. Hydrogen peroxide, for example, is a ROS. Um, and it's highly reactant because of the manner in which the electrons are formed on the outside of these molecules. They're highly reactive, uh, especially to very specific types of chemicals and molecules. Now, what we understand about ROSs is that when it comes to cancer cells, tumor cells, um, they kind of have like two sides to them. The balance in how they work and how they interact with tumor cells is very interesting. On one side, uh, it can promote something that is called protumorigenic signaling. And when this happens, ROSs basically are inspiring a tumor cell to grow, get bigger, bigger tumor, bigger tumor. But other times, when this balance of ROSs is manipulated, it can cause apoptosis or programmed cell death. And the tumor shrinks, tumor dies, cancer's gone. So for most people, this would be like, well, that's cool. That means it could be used in a cancer cure, right? Not exactly. This is something that is so incredibly hard to navigate and understand that even right now, the, the top biomedical engineers are trying to find a way to put this into a practical application, but I don't think we're close to being able to use this as a dependable cancer cure. Probably why they're doing this in Mexico. Uh, for them, they decided to go with iron injections because iron is a pretty reactive metal, and it's a heavy metal. Now, is there is there anything inherently dangerous in this? Maybe. Iron poisoning is a thing. Um, it can cause some really devastating effects. I assume that these, since these are real doctors, they're monitoring blood work so they know whether or not it's getting to dangerous levels or not, but... Yeah. Something called the rule of eight says all molecules need eight electrons in order to be stable except for helium and hydrogen. In our case, we are stealing these electrons from these atoms and they put the molecule of the cancer cell and the unstable molecules look around and steal electrons from other molecules and the cancer cell goes into a death spiral and commits suicide and it dies. That is not... No, what I said was right and what you said was wrong. And it's not necessarily, iron is not necessarily going to be stealing the electrons off of cancer molecules, cancer cells, whatever the fuck that is, but cancer cells. How are you going to steal the electrons off of cancer cells? Cancer cells? It, it, if, if you're talking about ROSs, reactive oxygen species, you're talking about this like everywhere in the bloodstream. Like, I, I don't, I don't, un mm. it's just, it, it, it makes no sense. It makes absolutely no sense. This dude does not understand what he's talking about. That's how we kill it. No. Well, that sounds wonderful, and it is. And I want to add one more thing, is that we can add other chemicals as well. That's oh, good. why if we remove 99% of the person's cancer and there's something remaining, we can add other substances. And I'll give you another example. We can use metformin, which will harm cancer stem cells, but not human good cells. It's used for people who are diabetic. Now, Did he say cancer stem cells? That would be weird. Another example, we can use metformin, which will harm cancer stem cells, but not human good cells. It's used for people who are diabetic. That's a weird one all, all, all around, but let's address that one real quick. Metformin recently has kind of hit the scene in the cancer researcher world uh, like like a like a bomb. Like, Ooh, this actually looks like it might have something to it. This is good, and w everybody's really really glad that it is. Um, continual tests and and studies have been showing that uh, using metformin, which was initially designed for treating diabetes, uh, does show some potential in fighting cancer. Actually, a lot of potential as it reduces the ability for the tumor effectively to consume energy. So just kind of, it, it, it withers a bit. Um, there's a lot more chemistry in it, there's a lot more biology in it, but I honestly, 
it feels like he threw Metformin in as kind of like an extra, like, okay, we're going to kill it with heat, but if the heat doesn't work, then we're going to inject you with iron. And if the iron doesn't work, we'll inject you with this drug that I read about in an article about cancer. Yeah, we're going to get that cancer. <laughs> like, it just, it just feels like he's just throwing that shit out there. It's weird. No. The downside of killing cancer very quickly is it creates toxins. That is an inaccurate and totally reductive fucking statement. <sighs> but go ahead. pH in your body is naturally between 7.35 and 7.45. pH? Why are we talking about the pH of the human body? You can't change the pH of a human body. What are you doing? Is this based on pH theory? This is going to be fucking wild. And real quick, if it is. If your pH dropped to 7, you would have only one hour to live. If your pH dropped to 7.15 or 7.2, you would have between 5 to 7 hours to live, and then you'd have a heart attack, and you would die. That is called tumor lysis syndrome in the case of cancer when cancer is killed quickly. No. No, it isn't. No, it isn't at all. How? What? What the what? This guy just said that if your pH goes into an imbalance and you're going to die, and that's a syndrome called tumor lysis syndrome. No, it isn't. Tumor lysis syndrome has nothing to do with the pH of the human body. It will never change the pH of the human body. That, that's not what happens. How in the world does anybody get that idea? Uh, and, and changing the pH of your body, if you could, is not going to cause tumor lysis syndrome. How, why are we talking about the pH balance of the human body? Like, like okay. Um, all right. Let's watch just a little bit more. I want to see, I want to see if, if this makes more sense in a minute. So if someone is sent home and they're on chemotherapy and they've just been diagnosed with stage 4 cancer and they have a heavy load of it, and they're sent home and they're put on chemo and they die within a day or two, more than likely, it's tumor lysis syndrome. The chemo was killing the cancer, along with a lot of collateral damage, which I want to also say right now is our procedure does not do collateral damage. Okay, we'll get to that in a second. So we just said that if somebody goes to the doctor and they get a bunch of chemotherapy and they die the next day, it was probably because of tumor lysis syndrome. Not necessarily true, um, <clears throat> but that is actually a real concern. Tumor lysis syndrome is a real thing. What it is, is, yeah, and he's not necessarily wrong in this regard, if you kill off a shit ton of cancer tissue all at once, say with radiation or chemotherapy, uh, that can basically release a lot of stuff that was all caught up in this tumor into your body. Our bodies rely on a homeostasis to operate normally. Like, uh, we have iron in our blood, as we were talking earlier, we have iron in our blood, but if we get too many iron injections, like... We can get real fucked up. We die. We can have heart attacks and die from that. Just as the same, if you go into tumor lysis syndrome, then it can cause like some very serious problems. We can separate the cancer cells from the good cells by using this heat, and we can only attack the cancer cells and kill them. We do not do collateral damage. The only damage we can do is if we don't remove the toxins from your bloodstream once the cancer dies. And that's the third part of our procedure, and that is this toxin removal system. In the past, people tried using kidney dialysis machines, intermittent renal dialysis. It will not work. The membrane has what's called a 6,000 Dalton membrane in it. It uses diffusion, going from a higher concentration to a lower. Spoiler alert, that machine he shows is a dialysis machine. But I just, I just want him to go ahead, go ahead and, and, and explain it real quick for us. We use um, what, what we call CRRT which is a form of dialysis in one way, and that is it's... In one way, which is uh, it pumps out your blood, it scrubs your blood, and it puts your blood back in. The therapy most commonly used is continuous renal replacement therapy, CRRT. In this slow form of hemodialysis, the patient's blood is removed and pumped through a hemofilter, which resembles a dialyzer. Here's... Here, here, here's where, here's where it gets a little interesting. Okay, tumor lysis syndrome is a real thing, but it manifests in very, very specific ways. 
not all types of tumor lysis syndrome need to be addressed in the same way as others because it is releasing a lot of excess things into your body depending on what those things are which are not toxins by the way it has to be addressed in different ways but for the most part we usually address it by making the patient pee they need to pee because spoiler alert the fastest way to get excess things in your body out of your body is by taking a pee or taking a poop that's how our bodies are designed that's how it's supposed to go in fact we've gotten so good at the various different medications that we use and the, the tactics that we employ that even as young as as five years old uh recovering from from massive amounts of, of tumor loss and then this little boy goes into tumor lysis syndrome uh, he didn't have to go through dialysis at all in fact the only time they ever consider doing dialysis is when somebody has hyperkalemia and it's uh basically when you have a flood of potassium specifically potassium into your bloodstream then they might hook you up then you might get dialysis but other than that no that's not how you treat tumor lysis syndrome unless you're a uh, bodybuilder skeletor over here i don't know it's, it's continuous renal replacement therapy it's in a cvvh mode which is convection mode in the convection mode we are not using diffusion we're using convection we are creating a drag across this membrane and we are sucking the acids out of the bloodstream the acids out of the bloodstream huh is that it watch watch very carefully watch his head and his shoulders and how he moves look at how sassy he gets i love it and we are dumping him into a waste bag now the plasma water in your body your bloodstream has about five gallons five liters of, of blood we have five gallons of blood that's that's good that's good about one and a half liters of your blood is plasma water Containing this plasma water are these toxins that we're pulling out with the with this continuous renal replacement therapy. Potassium's a toxin, guys. Potassium is a toxin. All right, man. Equipment. We are also removing the rest of the toxins, which are bound up in the albumin in your bloodstream, by running the blood across another membrane, which will. He's so um, sassy use pure albumin on one side and your blood that has the toxins connected to the albumin in your bloodstream will come in contact with with this membrane and say oh that's pure albumin on the other side I'm <laughs> i love his i love his descriptions his descriptions are the best i i i i am overjoyed when i hear my blood go oh here i was just trucking along through this biomedical tubing and all of a sudden, I come up, I, br I brush up against, like a sexy stranger on the subway, uh, some of that good good, some of that fresh, fresh albumin. Mmm, yeah, that's right. I'm going to just sashay my way over and get in this good albumin. What in the sweet, holy, bacon-fried shit of Buddha's butthole are you fucking talking about? What? Where in the world? Did you come up with this cartoon in your head that this makes any sense? We are the first people in the history of, of mankind, really, to be able to perfectly control a person's pH level. Biochemists can't do it. Scientists can't do it. Doctors really can't do it. They can give you some bicarbonates if you're acidic, or they can put fluids into your bloodstream and try to give you Lasix, or, which is a diuretic so that you'll pee it out of you, and try to, try to neutralize the... the, the um, the pH in your, in, in your, the acids in your bloodstream, the, the, um, uh, the, 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 um, but this is a real treatment that really exists, and these scans you just saw are real. So if someone is dying of cancer, I want to repeat it again, and they're stage four, and they have a month to live, if you bring them to us, we will make their cancer disappear. Every single aspect of this is just a, a, a butchery of actual biochemical research and and technology and, and and tactics and strategies for dealing with cancer it's all a rehash of the same old shit i don't understand how how people like this operate like th this is great this is so great you know what the, you know what this reminds me of this reminds me of that that kid that kid who thinks he's just discovered the coolest goddamn thing in the world you go to the mcdonald's right and then you get your cup 
You put a little bit of Coca Cola in it. Then you put some Sprite in it. Oh, maybe some Mountain Dew, maybe some root beer. How has nobody ever thought of this before? Wow, I must be a genius. This is the same thing, but with cancer treatments and uh, trying to lure um, extremely ill, dying people to Mexico to their sketchy clinic. Now, there's a few more red flags in this that I just wanted to touch on real quick. We'll be done. Number one, um, there is no testimonials that of anybody who went to this clinic. So for all we know, either they never went, they don't exist, and it's all a bunch of make-believe, or they could be dead, or maybe somehow these bumbling buffoons have managed to actually cure somebody of cancer, in which case... I don't know why they're not coming forth with their evidence because they would probably win a Nobel fucking prize. Isn't it weird how that happens all the time with these these people with these alternative treatments? They, they claim that they can do all these miracle things. Yet if they did, they would probably be world-renowned and, and famous and heralded as heroes. Yet something is just not, I don't know why not. Now, according to Patrick Spearman, he does have um, a request in with the FDA to be able to bring his human trials to the United States. I don't know why he's not going through the process of how this is supposed to work and just decided to hop on over the border and start experimenting on humans there. I mean, this is somebody who has been working in the biomedical industry for a long time. And he has a doctor with him who has been working in the biomedical industry a long time. Kind of seriously weird. They wouldn't actually follow the rules. Don't know what that's about. But when somebody says that they have the magic cure in which they're going to be able to treat and help you, the sick and the fucking dying, they're probably a bunch of con artists. Now, is there anything specifically to this humility slash humanity cancer treatment, the life extension treatment? I don't know. Maybe it's just poorly explained by by weird bodybuilding Skeletor. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, he did not convince me. And in fact, I'm actually more disturbed by this. So there you go. That is the uh, the sketchy, sketchy treatment of uh, uh, cooking, cooking people and injecting them full of weird things to cure their cancer, run by somebody who owns three medical companies uh, with offices in Minnesota. I think he's breaking the law somewhere, somehow. I'm pretty sure. I, I think I think him trying to advocate getting uh, Americans to hop the border to go do unproven human experiments, I'm pretty sure that's illegal somewhere, but maybe somebody out there can help me out with that. I'd appreciate your feedback. Anyway, that's going to be it for me today, guys. I hope you had fun. Um, I really want to get back to more important videos, but I had to share this with you because it is just so, so very. Yep. From my family, dearest, take care, everybody. Bye-bye.